Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in the Haven, Kent, uh, southeast England, on the coast of the English Channel. <clears throat> um, one more day into the new year, 2021. And we are here now in the UK uh, in a national lockdown. Yeah, once again, just like in March and April, uh, it's locked down. But this time at least there's some light at the end of the tunnel because the uh, vaccines, there's two of them that have been approved for the UK, one of them from the UK and one of them from the US. And they're, they're, they're starting to be um, distributed and uh, the disturbances of the material world are all temporary um, but eventually the whole material creation will be destroyed what to speak of the end of some virus or, or pandemic or our own lives. Uh, so Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he uh, gave us this beautiful um, poetic description of the Chaitanya Charitamrita in which he used this analogy. He said, <clears throat> in due course, <clears throat> Maha Pralaya, devastating floods, will inundate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam. But under no circumstances release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage. Because after the flood has subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda. Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda <clears throat> so here we are, um, working our way through the Anjalila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and we have reached the sixth chapter, the meeting of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Raghunath Das Goswami. A summary of this chapter is given by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Am Amrita Pravaha Bhasha as follows. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went into transcendental fits of ecstatic love, Ramananda Roy and Surup Damodar Goswami attended to him and satisfied him as he desired. Raghunath Das Goswami had been attempting to come to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for a long time. And finally he left his home and met the Lord. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Shantipur on his way to Vrindavan, Raghunath Das Goswami had offered to dedicate his life at the Lord's lotus feet. In the meantime, however, a Muslim official became envious of Hiranya Das, Raghunath Das's Goswami's uncle, and induced some big official court minister to have him arrested. Thus, Hiranya Das left his home. But, the but by the intelligence of Raghunath Das, 
the misunderstanding was mitigated. Then Raghunath Das went to Panihati and following the order of Lord of Nityananda Prabhu, he observed a festival, Chit Dadi Mahotsava, by distributing chipped rice mixed with yogurt. The day after the festival, Nityananda Prabhu gave Raghunath Das the blessing that he would very soon attain the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After this incident, Raghunath Das, with the help of his priest, whose, whose name was Yadunanda Acharya, got out of his house by trickery and thus ran away. Not touching the general path, Raghunath Das Goswami secretly went to Jagannath Puri. After twelve days, he arrived in Jagannath Puri at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entrusted Raghunath Das Goswami to Sarup Damodar Goswami. Therefore, another name for Raghunath Das Goswami is Srupera Raghu, Sarupera Raghu, or the Raghunath of Sarup Damodar. For five days, Raghunath Das Goswami took prasadam at the temple, but later he would stand at the Singhadwara gate and eat only whatever he could gather by alms. Later, he lived by taking alms from various chatras or food distribution centers. When Raghunath Das's father received news of this, he sent some men and money, but Raghunath Das Goswami refused to accept the money. Understanding that Raghunath Das Goswami was living by begging from the chatras, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu presented him with his own gunjamala and a stone from Govardhan Hill. Thereafter, Raghunath Das Goswami used to eat the rejected food that he had collected and washed. This renounced life greatly pleased both Sri Damodar Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took by force some of the food, thus blessing Raghunath Goswami for his renunciation. Text 1 <clears throat> With the ropes of his causeless mercy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu employed a trick to deliver Raghunath Das Goswami from the blind well of contemptible family life. He made Raghunath Das Goswami one of his personal associates, placing him under the charge of Srup Damodar Goswami. I offer my obeisances unto him. <clears throat> I'll read that again. With the ropes of his causeless mercy, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, employed a trick to deliver Raghunath Das Goswami from the blind well of contemptible family life. He made Raghunath Goswami one of his personal associates, placing him under the charge of Srup Damodar Goswami. I offer my obeisances unto him. Text 2 all glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Sri Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 3. Thus Lord Gorachandra performed various pastimes with his associates at Jagannath Puri in varieties of transcendental pleasure. Four. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt pangs of separation from Krishna, he did not manifest his feelings externally, for he feared the unhappiness of his devotees. Five. The transformations undergone by the Lord when he manifested severe unhappiness due to separation from Krishna cannot be described. When the Lord acutely felt pangs of separation from Krishna. Only Sri Ramananda Roy talks about Krishna and the sweet songs of Surup Damodar 
kept him alive. Because the Lord associated with various devotees during the day, his mind was somewhat diverted. But at night, the pangs of separation from Krishna increased very rapidly. Text 8 Two people, Ramananda Roy and Surup Damodar Goswami, stayed with the Lord to pacify Him by reciting ver- various verses about Krishna's pastimes and by singing appropriate songs for His sur- satisfaction. Text 9 Previously, when Lord, when Lord Krishna was personally present, Subal, one of his cowherd boyfriends, gave him happiness when he felt separation from Radharani. Similarly, Ramananda Roy helped give happiness to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 10 Previously, when Srimati Radharani felt the pangs of separation from Krishna, her constant companion, Lalita, kept her alive by helping her in many ways. Similarly, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt Radharani's emotions, Surup Damodar Goswami helped him maintain his life. Text 11 To to describe the fortunate position of Ramananda Roy and Surup Damodar Goswami is extremely difficult. They were renowned as intimately confidential friends of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 12. The Lord thus enjoyed His life with His devotees. O devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now hear how Raghunath Das Goswami met the Lord. 13. When Raghunath Das, during his family life, went to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Shantipur, the Lord gave him worthy instructions by his causeless mercy. 14. Instead of becoming a so-called renunciant, Raghunath Das, following the instructions of the Lord, returned home and played exactly like a pounds and shillings man. 15. Raghunath Das was inwardly completely renounced, even in family life, but he did not express his renunciation externally. Instead, he acted just like an ordinary businessman. Seeing this, his father and mother were satisfied. Text 16 When he received the message that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had returned from Mathura city, Raghunath Das, endeavor to go to the lotus feet of the Lord. Text 17 At that time there was a Muslim official collecting the taxes of Saptagram. Purport Formerly, when the Muslim government was in power, the person appointed tax collector would collect the taxes from the local zamindars or landholders. He would keep one-fourth of the collection for himself as a profit and the balance he would deliver to the treasury of the government. When Hiranya Das, Raghunath Das's uncle, made an agreement with the, gov- with the government to collect taxes, the Muslim Chaudhry, or tax collector, having lost his position, became extremely envious of Hiranya Das. 19. Hiranya Das was collecting two million gold coins Mm. and therefore should have delivered 1,500,000 to the government. Instead, he was giving only 1,200,000, thus making an extra profit of 300,000 coins. Seeing this, the Muslim Chaudhuri, who was a Turk, became his rival. 20. After sending a confidential account to the government treasury, the Chowdhury <clears throat> brought the minister in charge. The Chowdhury came, wanting to arrest Hiranya Das, but Hiranya Das had left home. Therefore, the Chowdhury arrested Raghunath Das. 21.
Every day the Muslim would chastise Raghunath Das and tell him, bring your father and his elder brother, otherwise you will be punished. The Chaudhry wanted to beat him, but as soon as he saw Raghunath's face, his mind changed and he could not beat him. 23. Indeed, the Chaudhry was afraid of Raghunath Das because Raghunath Das belonged to the Kayasta community. Although the Chaudhry would chastise him with oral vibrations, he was afraid to beat him. Purport Raghunath Das belonged to a very aristocratic family of the Kayasta community. He had substantial influence with the local people and therefore the Chaudhuri, or minister, was afraid to beat him. Superficially he would chastise Raghunath Das with threatening vibrations, but he did not beat him. The members of the Kayasta community in India are generally very intelligent and expert in business management. Formerly, they were, they, were, they were mostly government of government officers. They were mentioned even by Yajnavalkya, as quoted by Śrīla Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Amrita Pravaha Bhāsya. Chattat tash karadur vritaya maha sahasikādi bihi pidyamāna praja rakshat kāyastaish ca visheshitaha <coughs> <clears throat> From this verse, it appears that the government officials of the Kayasta community would sometimes chastise the citizens, and that it was thus the duty of the king to protect the people in general from the atrocities of the Kayastas. In Bengal, the Kayasta community is honored almost as much as the Brahmana community. But in the upcountry of India, the Kayastas are considered Shudras because they generally eat meat and drink wine. In any case, from history, the Kayastas appear very intelligent. Thus, the Muslim Chaudhuri was afraid of Raghunath Das because he belonged to the Kayasta community. 24. While this was going on, Raghunath Das thought of a tricky method of escape. Thus he humbly submitted his, this plea at the feet of the Muslim Chaudhuri. Text 25 My dear sir, my father and his elder brother are your brothers. All brothers always fight about something. Sometimes brothers fight amongst, among themselves and sometimes they have very friendly dealings. There is no certainty when such changes will take place. Thus I am sure that although today you are fighting, tomorrow you three brothers will be sitting together in peace. 27. Just as I am my father's son, so I am also yours. I am your dependent, and you are my maintainer. 28. For a maintainer to punish the person he maintains is not good. You are expert in all the scriptures. Indeed, you are like a living saint. 29. When the Muslim heard Raghunath Das's appealing voice, his heart softened. He began to cry, and tears glided down his beard. Text 30. The Muslim Chaudhuri told Raghunath Das, You are my son from this day on. Today, by some means, I shall have you released. 31. After informing the minister, the Chaudhuri released Raghunath Das and then began to speak to him with great affection. 32. Your father's elder brother is less intelligent, he said. He enjoys 800,000 coins, but since I am also a shareholder, he should give some portion of it to me. 33. Now you go arrange a meeting between me and your uncle. Let him do whatever he thinks best. I shall completely depend 
on his decision. 34. Raghunath Das arranged a meeting between his uncle and the Chaudhary. The matter was settled and everything was peaceful. 35. In this way, Raghunath Das passed one year exactly like a first-class business manager, but the next year he again decided to leave home. 36. He got up alone one night and left, but his father caught him in a distant place and brought him back. 37. This became almost a daily affair. Raghunath would run away from home and his father would again bring him back. Then, then Raghunath Das's mother spoke to his father as follows. Our son has become mad, she said. Just keep him by binding him with ropes. His father, being very unhappy, replied to her as follows. Raghunath Das, our son, has opulences like Indra, the heavenly king, and his wife is as beautiful as an angel. Yet all this could not tie down his mind. How then could we keep this boy from by, by binding him with ropes? It is not possible, even for one's father, to nullify the reactions of one's past activities. 41. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <clears throat> Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has fully bestowed his mercy on him. Who can keep who can keep home such a madman of Chaitanya Chandra? forty two. Then Raghunathas considered something in his mind, and the next day he went to Nityananda Goshai. forty three. In the village of Panihati, Raghunath Das obtained an interview with Nityananda Prabhu, who was accompanied by many kirtan performers, servants, and others. Sitting on a rock underneath, under a tree on the bank of the Ganges, Lord Nityananda seemed as effulgent as hundreds of thousands of rising suns. 45. Many devotees sat on the ground surrounding him, Seeing the influence of Nityananda Prabhu, Raghunath Das was astonished. 46. Raghunath Das offered his obeisances <coughs> by falling prostrate. <coughs> Raghunath Das offered his obeisances by falling prostrate at a distant place, and the servant of Nityananda Prabhu pointed out, There is Raghunath Das offering you obeisances. 47. Hearing this, Lord Nityananda Prabhu said, You are a thief. Now you have come to see me. Come here. Come here. Today I shall punish you. 48. The Lord called him, but Raghunath Das did not go near the Lord. Then the Lord forcibly caught him and placed his lotus feet upon Raghunath Das's head. Lord Nityananda was by nature very merciful and funny. Being merciful, he spoke to Raghunath Das as follows. You were just like a thief, for instead of coming near, you stay away at a distant place. Now that I have captured you, I shall punish you. Make a festival and feed all my associates yogurt and chipped rice. Hearing this, Raghunath Das was greatly pleased. 52. Raghunath Das immediately sent his own men to the village to purchase all kinds of eatables and bring them back. 53. Raghunath Das brought chipped rice, yogurt, milk, sweetmeats, sugar, bananas, and other eatables and placed them all around. 54. As soon as they heard that a fest... <clears throat> As soon as they heard that a festival was going on to be held, all kinds of brahmanas and other gentlemen began to arrive. Thus, there were innumerable people. 55. Seeing the crowd increasing, Raghunath Das 
arranged to take it more eatables from other villages. He also brought two or four hundred large round earthen pots. He also obtained five or seven especially large earthen pots. And in these pots, a brahmana began soaking chipped rice for the satisfaction of Lord Nityananda. 57. In one place, chipped rice was soaked in hot milk and in, and e and in each of the large pots. Then half the rice was mixed with yogurt, sugar and bananas. The other half was mixed with condensed milk and a special type of banana known as Champa kala. Then sugar, clarified butter, and camphor were added. Ooh. 59. After Nityananda Prabhu had changed his cloth for a new one and sat on a, and sat on a raised platform, the Brahmana brought before him the seven huge pots. 60. On that platform, all the most important Associates of, of Sri Nityananda Prabhu, as well as other important men, sat down in a circle around the Lord. 61. Uh, among them were Ramadas, Sud, uh, Sundarananda, Gadadhar Das, Murari, Kamalakshara, Sadashiva, and Purandara. 62. Dhananjaya, Jagadish, Parameshwara Das, Mahesh, Gori Das and Hoda Krishna Das were also there. Similarly, uh, Udarananda Datta Thakur and many other personal associates of the Lord sat on the raised platform with Nityananda Prabhu. No one could count them all. Purport The devotees mentioned herein are described by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his Anubhasha. For further information, one may consult the following references in the Adi Lila. Ramadas, chapter 10, texts 116 through 118, and chapter 11, texts 13 through 16. Sundarananda, 11.23. Gadadar Das, 10.53, 11, 13, 15, 15, and 11.17 Murari the Murari mentioned herein is different from Murari Gupta his full name is Murari Chaitanya Das and he is a personal associate of Nityananda Prabhu thus one should consult chapter 11 text 20 Kamala, Kamalakara 11.24 Sadashiva 11.38 Purandara 11.28 Dhananjaya, 11.31 Jagadish, 11.30 Parameshwara, 11.29 Mahesh, 11.32 Goridas, 11.26 Hoda Krishnadas, 11.47 Udarananda Datta Thakur, 11.41 Text 64 <clears throat> Hearing about the festival, all kinds of learned scholars, brahmanas, and priests went there. Lord Nityananda Prabhu honored them and made them sit on the raised platform with him. 65. Everyone was offered two earthen pots. In one was put chipped rice with condensed milk, and in the other, chipped rice with yogurt. Text 66 All the other people sat in groups around the platform. No one could count how many people were there. Text 67 Each and every one of them was supplied two earthen pots, one of chipped rice soaking in yogurt and the other chipped rice soaking in condensed milk. 68 Some of the brahmanas not having gotten a place on the platform, went to the bank of the Ganges with their two earthen pots and soaked their chipped rice there. 69. Others, 
who could not get a place even on the bank of the Ganges, sat down in, into the water, got down into the water, and began eating their two kinds of chipped rice. What a scene, huh? Text 70. Thus, some sat on the platform, some at the base of the platform, and some on the bank of the Ganges, and they were all supplied two pots each by the twenty men who distributed the food. Text 671. At that time, Raghava Pandit arrived there. Seeing the situation, he began to laugh in great surprise. He brought many kinds of food cooked in ghee and offered to the Lord. This prasadam he first placed before Lord Nityananda and then distributed among the devotees. 73. Raghava Pandit said to Lord Nityananda, For you, sir, I have already offered food to the deity at home, but you are engaged in a festival here, so the food is lying there, untouched. 74. Lord Nityananda replied, Let me eat all this food here during the day, and I shall eat at your home at night. Text 75. I belong to a community of cowherd boys and therefore I generally have many cowherd associates with me. I am happy when we eat together in a picnic like this by the sandy bank of the river. 20-76 Lord Nityananda made Raghava Pandit sit down and had two pots delivered to him also. There were two kinds of chipped rice soaked in them. When chipped rice had been served to everyone, Lord Nityananda Prabhu, in meditation, brought Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 78 When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived, Lord Nityananda Prabhu stood up. They then saw how the others were enjoying this chipped rice with yogurt and condensed milk. 79 From each and every pot, Lord Nityananda Prabhu took one morsel of chipped rice and pushed it into the mouth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a, as a joke. Text 80 <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also smiling, took a morsel of food, pushed it into the mouth of Nityananda and laughed as he made Lord Nityananda eat it. Text 81 In this way Lord Nityananda was walking through all the groups of eaters and all the Vaishnavas standing there were seeing the fun. Text 82 No one could understand what Nityananda Prabhu was doing as he walked about. Some, however, who were very fortunate could see that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also present. Text 83 Then Nityananda Prabhu smiled and sat down. On his right side, he kept four pots of chipped rice that had not that had not been made from boiled patty. 84. Nityananda offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a place and had him sit down. Then together, the two brothers began eating chipped rice. Text 85. Seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eating with him, Lord Nityananda Prabhu became very happy and exhibited varieties of ecstatic love. Text 86. Lord Nityananda Prabhu ordered all of you eat, chanting the holy name of Hari. Immediately the holy names Hari, Hari resounded, filling the entire creation. 87. When all the Vaishnavas were chanting the holy names Hari, Hari and eating, they remembered how Krishna and Balaram ate with their companions, the cowherd boys, on the bank of the Yamuna. Text 88 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu were extremely merciful and liberal. It was Raghunath Das's good fortune that they all accepted, that they accepted all these dealings. 89 Who can understand the influence and mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu? He is so powerful that he induced Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come eat chipped rice on the bank of the Ganges. Text 90 
all the confidential devotees who were cowherd boys headed by Sri Ramdas were absorbed in ecstatic love. They thought, the, they thought the bank of the Ganges to be the bank of the Jamuna. 91. When the shopkeepers of many other villages heard about the festival, they arrived there to sell chipped rice, yogurt, sweetmeats, and bananas. <laughs> Entrepreneurs. Text 92. As they came bringing all kinds of food, Raghunath Das purchased it all. He gave them the price for their goods and later fed them the very same food. Text 93 Anyone who came to see how these funny things were going on was also fed chipped rice, yogurt, and bananas. 94 After Lord Nityananda Prabhu finished eating, he washed his hands and mouth and gave Raghunath Das the food remaining in the four pots. Text 95. There was food remaining in the other big pots of Lord Nityananda, and a Brahmana distributed, distributed it to all the devotees, giving a morsel to each. 96. When a Brahmana brought a flower garland, placed the garland on Nityananda Prabhu's neck, and smeared sandalwood, then a brahmana brought a flower garland, placed the garland on Nityananda Prabhu's neck and smeared sandalwood pulp all over his body. When a servant brought betel nuts and offered them to Lord Nityananda, the Lord smiled and chewed them. 98. With his own hands, Lord Nityananda Prabhu distributed to all the devotees whatever flower garland, sandalwood pulp and betel nuts remained. Text 99. After receiving the remnants of food left by Lord Nityananda Prabhu, Raghunath Das, who was greatly happy, ate some and distributed the rest among his own associates. Text 100. Thus I have described the pastimes of Lord Nityananda Prabhu in relation to the celebrated festival of chipped rice and yogurt. And I'll stop my reading for tonight. We're at a very nice stopping place. Next section, we'll discuss another aspect. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. Chip Rice Festival of Lord Nityananda. Raghunath Das Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Okay, if we have any reflections or comments or discussions, please enlighten us, enliven us. So far, there's just a few greetings I could read. Please. First is from Maharani Vrinda Devi Dasi. Vrinda Devi Dasi, Hare Krishna, Maha, Maharani, Vrinda Devi. She says, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to you, dear Maharaj. Well, Hare Krishna, thank you very much for coming to hear. And from Sue Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, Sue Devi. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. Mm. Glories to Srila Prabhupada's daily nectar. Thank you for being here for us. Hare Krishna. It is my pleasure always. From Vilasini Devi Dasi and Andrew Dimal. Oh. They send obeisances. 
Well, Hare Krishna, thank you so much. From Bhakti Noel. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for your service. Also, now I owe you a letter. You inspire and ground me, your servant. Hare uh, Krishna, thank you. Rati Manjari says, Jai Guru Maharaj. Rati Manjari, you're so, uh, you know, you're so quiet lately. You must be relishing these pastimes to the point where you are stunned, sounds like, to me. Anyway, I'm very, very happy. These pastimes in the Anjaliva are pure, unadulterated nectar be drunk from the ears and enliven yes, the heart where the soul stays. Just by hearing with faith and devotion without argument these pastimes we will get love of God just by this simple activity. Don't have to be anything big, don't have to do anything great. This is so pleasing to Srila Prabhupada, so pleasing to the previous Acharyas, so pleasing to Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. Surely it will create auspiciousness everywhere. Hare Krishna. It's a comment from Bhakta Ben. Hare Bo Bhakta Ben, Hare Krishna. He says, Jai, thanks for bringing us to the festival, Maharaj. <laughs> The condensed milk one with ghee sounds great. Yeah, I did. I like that too. And there's a question from Braj Balaba. Kadibo Braj. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare All Krishna. glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, and glories to Prabhupada. We spoke a little yesterday about the difference between our body and Krishna's. In our spiritual form, do we naturally look like Krishna? I'm wondering if there's a specific form the spiritual body looks like. Four arms, two arms, or am I off base here? Well, the spiritual world is very large and, and inconceivably large. <clears throat> and in the spiritual sky, there's many Vaikuntha planets. And each one of those Vaikuntha planets are presided over by a form of Lord Vishnu, forearms for form of Lord Vishnu. And um, then Goloka Vrindavan is the topmost planet above all of those. It's actually the horal of the lotus of the spiritual planets. And there, oh, in Vaikuntha and in Goloka Vrindavan, there's a variety of forms of devotees. They have all kinds of forms, not just one kind of form. It's not that uh, Krishna likes everybody to look the same and act the same, like they're a cookie cutter, a cookie cut from the same dough. It's not like that at all. Every single soul is different. Every single s spiritual body of every living being is different. Uh, so it depends on the relationship that one has with Krishna. It depends on the desire of the devotee uh, to to be with the Lord, to worship the Lord, to exchange uh, loving dealings with the Lord. In Vaikuntha, the planets have a mood, generally, uh, reliant on the opulence of Krishna. Very prominent is the opulence. Uh, very extremely opulent situa living situations and food and, and clothes and everything. And there the the relationship of the Lord and his devotees is one of service, uh, but not much deeper than that. There's only one person in the Vaikuntha planets, in each, in, in each Vaikuntha planet, in conjugal love with Krishna, and that's the goddess of fortune. But in uh, Ayodhya and then uh, eventually Dwarka and Mathura and Vrindavan, all the devotees have great varieties of forms. Uh, they have the forms of human forms. They have the plant forms of plants and trees and animals and birds and 
everything in the spiritual world is a conscious living being. So this is inconceivable to us because we're here in this material world and we're surrounded by material energy and uh, you know we have to eat and evacuate and do all these things just to maintain the body and it's an embarrassment in many ways. But in the spiritual world, all the forms are made of spiritual energy. Satchitananda. Everything is blissful. Everything is full of knowledge. Uh, everything is is uh, eternal. There's no death. There's no disease. There's no age. There's no, no birth. Old age, no birth. So it's a completely different atmosphere. And Krishna, being the supreme enjoyer, he relishes unlimited variety. You know, here we say, Variety is the spice of life. You can't just do one thing. You have to do a lot of different things to be happy. So in the spiritual world, it's like that. Only unlimited so, unlimitedly so. So it's not possible to make a, you know, a uh, formulaic statement about how, what the forms in the spiritual world look like. There's all kinds of forms. Un unlimited variety. And Krishna is in the aprakat lila, in the spiritual pastimes. He can be with every single one of those souls, trillions of them, all at once. And everyone feels like Krishna is with him, with, with him or her alone. And all the living beings that have associate with Krishna and the cowherd boys and the cowherd girls and the residents of Brajadam, they all taste spiritual bliss that's created from the relationship, especially of Radha and Krishna. Their loving affair is so powerful, it creates an atmosphere in which everyone, no matter what their relationship is, is tinged with this sweetness that covers, is so powerful and so deep that it covers uh, everyone from noticing the opulences that are there. There's more opulence in Goloka Vrindavan than any other place. It is the source of all opulence. It's the source of everything. It's the source of music and dance and, and all kinds of artistic endeavor. It's the source of all kinds of happiness. Hare Krishna. Rajabalabha says, I guess I am a formula man. <laughs> yeah, well, keep it up. <laughs> keep it up. You're helping so much with this project we're trying to do here. Uh, <coughs> uh, a comment from Sudevi Dasi. Hmm. She says, that was wonderful to hear. I feel like I have just been to a big party, and now I want to make rice and yogurt and offer to my <laughs> Goranitai. Yes. Yes, this is the heart of a devotee. They naturally want to share whatever happiness they feel with the Lord first and then enjoy the prasad. Salani Sati Sundari says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada, all glories to CC. Jai, all glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his eternal associates and their transcendental, unlimited, loving pastimes. Uh, Rati Manjari says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Jai Rati, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I came late tonight, but I also was very happy to hear this special pastime coming from you. Simply joyful. Yes, that's the goal. Uh, Prabhupada took the trouble to write all these books because he wanted to see everyone happy. That's the goal of the Krishna consciousness movement, to make as many people as possible happy by sharing the pastimes of the Lord with them and the transcend transcendental philosophy and science of the Krishna consciousness. She also says, thank you for that lovely explanation of the spiritual world. Hare Krishna. 
There's a question from Bhakta Stefano. Bhakta Stefano, Hare Krishna. He says, a devotee of Iskhan goes to Goloka Vrindavan after leaving the body or goes somewhere else in Vaikuntha planets? Again, it depends on the devotee. Every one of us has a eternal relationship with Krishna. It is called Stai Bhava. Stai Bhava means the permanent ecstasy. It takes the form of a a relationship in the, in, the, in the mood of either a neutral relationship or a servant, servitude relationship or a friendly relationship or a parental relationship or a conjugal relationship, wedded or unwedded. And all these moods are in different places, in different mo- ways, in all of the uh, planets. And they're all there in Goloka Vrindavan. Not all of those rasas are everywhere. In Vaikuntha planets, there's uh, Dasya Rasa is very prominent, the service attitude, with awe and reverence and opulence. And there's some tinge of friendship, but it is formal, very formal. But in Goloka Vrindavan, all the relationships are, are displayed in full, with full variety. And it's impossible to describe it, you know, all. We can only understand the basics and and read the books like the Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Vriya Bhagavatamrita, to hear of the wonderful nature uh, of the pastimes of the Lord. And by doing this, we should start to feel separation from Krishna and a hankering to be with Krishna, and especially a hankering to uh, share this nectar with uh, as many conditioned souls as possible. That is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. He came here to deliver love of God to everyone who is willing to accept it. It doesn't mean that everyone will be willing to accept it. Some some are uh, escape, you know, Chaitanya's loving network by by their so-called speculative philosophy or their pride in their learning or their degraded, debauched activities or whatever. But anyone who's sincere and honest, they hear these pastimes, they will be touched and eventually they will come to Christian consciousness. When the time is right and the Lord chooses them, Why does the Lord choose some and not choose others? That is His sweet will. That's His sweet will. We can't impose our will on the Lord's will. The prayer that is in every major religion is that I want my will to be the same as the Lord's will. This is real oneness. This is real agreement. And it's the basis of loving exchange with the Lord. And all these varieties of exchanges that you hear about, this Chip Rice Festival, you know, with Lord Nityananda and all his associates and Raghunath Das and all the residents of Navadweep, they're all uh, in the Bengal, wherever he was. It's all Krishna's mercy and it's all arranged for Krishna's satisfaction. And we share in that satisfaction whenever we participate in anything that is connected with Krishna and Lord Chaitanya and their pastimes. Hare Krishna. Another uh, from Rati Manjari. Hey Rati, good. It sounded like you woke up. Party bowl. Welcome back. She said, hearing about the festival, I also thought how sweet it is that the Supreme Lords and their devotees get so happy with such simple foodstuffs as yogurt and chipped rice. Yes, so simple. Everything they do is very simple and sweet. The chanting, the feasting, 
the, the games, the fun, the dancing, relishing. That's what they. That's what they're all about. They're in relishing. That spiritual life. And the more we simplify our lives, and and absorb ourselves in these pastimes, and in distributing them to others, the more blissful we will be. Also, that's a fact. Even in the midst of this chaos we're going through with the pandemic. Maharani Vrinda Devi Dasi says, loving means sharing and serving. Yes, absolutely. Nrati Manjari says, who could have thought anything like this without Srila Prabhupada's efforts in having translated these books? Absolutely true, absolutely. It's an amazing feat. Prabhupada told someone, I can't remember who, it was in the early days of Mayapur. And uh, I can't remember exactly the details, and I don't want to say anything that's not exactly true. It's my, it's my duty as a sannyasi not to say anything that's not exactly true. But Papad was talking about the spiritual world, and he was talking about conversation he had with Krishna and when Krishna asked him to come to the material world he said I don't think I want to do that this is a horrible place down there and then he said no you just go there and translate these books and we'll take care of everything else (laughs) yoga kshemam baham yaham Ananya chentiyantu mam ye janak prayupasate tesham nitya bhyukta nam yoga chemam aham yaham. So if our service becomes ananya, it becomes uh, un- unmotivated and uninterrupted and constant, uh, then, then Krishna, being so happy and pleased with us, he will maintain whatever we have and he will provide whatever we lack. In India, there's a, in the insurance company, and it, the, their motto is Yoga Chema Maham. I provide what you lack. <laughs> Even in India, there's, there's still a reflection of these things. Hare Krishna. As of now, this is the last comment from Bhakti Ben. He says it was really nice to hear of Lord Nityananda's sense of humor. Oh yeah, Lord Nityananda was very funny. Oftentimes it can get very serious and stiff, especially in an ashram environment. I personally get a lot of joy from joking around with the boys, usually in the right circumstance. Yes, that's our happiness. That's our ha- we always have to keep our sense of humor. If you don't keep your sense of humor, oh, living in this material world is unbearable. We, there's always something to appreciate and to and have a good laugh about. Okay, we'll leave it at that for tonight. Thank you so much for your lovely con- comments. I, I appreciate so much when you have your reflections and comments and make and make uh, have discussion, that is the goal of my life, to create that atmosphere in which that happens. Hare Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai, samabeda bhakta vinda ki jai, gaur premanandi hari hari bo. And we'll see you tomorrow night, same place, same time, same topic, the relief of transcendental satisfaction and happiness. Hare Krishna.